Hi everyone, and welcome back to Retrobeat. Now, I've been off the tubes for three, possibly four weeks by now, um, and I've been looking for a great excuse to make a comeback and make a new video. And well, this has arrived. Yes, we're gonna be playing Spectrum Homebrew on the channel for the first time in quite a while, but not only in any game. This is Redshift, and Redshift looks absolutely fantastic. So guys, I'm really glad you could join me for your fix of homebrew gaming on the ZX Spectrum. As I was mentioning before the credits, this game is one I've been looking forward to playing for quite some time. How it's still sealed, I will never know. But it is that moment, it is the moment where I'm going to open this game and I'm going to show you inside, I'm going to show you the box, the artwork, the physical tape, then we're going to go on to some gameplay and then we'll come back for some final thoughts. So, this game here is called Redshift, as I'm sure you're very aware. Redshift is a ZX Spectrum game. You can play it on the 48K or the 128. Now, if you're fast at the minute, guys, this game is only seven pounds rather than 10 pounds from Bitmap Soft. Um, all the links to the game where I bought it from will be in the description down below. So, originally, this game was developed by XXI Soft. Now, I think um, they're a Spanish speaking, uh, possibly Argentinian. Um, the game itself is set in 2992, and of course, it's the old battle uh, humans against the aliens. But this time, we're fighting for the multiverse. Now, one thing I did find out about playing this game uh, when I was doing a bit of research on it was that it is actually a remake of Galaxian 3. Um, and in 2018, the devs, uh, well, it was for the ZX dev competition in 2018, they thought that they would get this back out of retirement and finish off the game, and we are left with this. Now, this did come third in Game of the Year in 2019 in the Planet Sinclair magazine. But, of course, you know, everyone rates games differently, so this time, it's, uh, it's time for me to give you my take on what I think about this game. But before we do that, let's just have a quick look inside. So, as you can see, we've got some lovely, lovely artwork on the front. Um, cool looking spaceship. Um, you've got the planet Earth in the background. The original um, developer here, um, that's what they use for their uh, for their logo as well. Um, obviously, we've got a bit of bitmap soft on there, and we've got the lovely Redshift logo at the top. So, looking inside, we've got, and of course, it has to be a red tier for a game called Redshift lovely um, artwork on the actual label inside there side A and side B now as far as I'm aware both side A and side B are identical and as we take a look at the inlay all your usual shenanigans there you've got the spine you've got a bit of information on the back there and inside we've got a few screenshots and a little bit of the story and of course some basic controls as well. So, it looks great. I've heard some fantastic things about it from fellow YouTubers. So I'm genuinely looking forward to playing this, guys. So, without further ado, let's get down to some gameplay. So I love uh, at the beginning of the game how you speed up and blast off into outer space. Um, on the right hand side you can see in the green there we've got our shields. Um, these obviously go down the more times you hit but over time they do re-energise. Uh, underneath that you've got an energy bar in red after your shields have gone and that's gone I'm afraid it's game over. <laughs> Great soundtrack in the background. Love the bass, um, the noise of the, the lasers and the, uh, the incoming fire. Not annoying, nice like high pitch kind of sound. Goes very well with the game. 
here you can see one of the uh, one of the pickups that you've got to get so if we pick that up you'll see on the back left hand side of the ship now that part's been added to the ship this goes on throughout the whole game you get extra wings all sorts really really good part of the game As you can see, every time you blow stuff up as well, um, there's lots of things to pick up, uh, the points, um, extra weapons, all sorts like that. Um, yeah, it keeps you interested, it keeps you engaged, while also trying to pick these things up, while trying to avoid fire and destroy the enemy ships, it gets pretty hectic. then when you move on to uh, another part of the game you can see that the background's changed into a yellow this is a monochrome game but as you can see the incoming fire there how it uh, like flashes between the black and the yellow so you can still see it no matter what background it's on that's really helpful in this game So we'll just fast forward slightly and you can see that they um, both got all of the wings now to the ship which increases my firepower and um, which is definitely needed when you start getting towards the end of the level. And here we are, end of level boss. Now, the end of level boss has got three or four different parts to it. You can see the little squares that come up to say that it's a target. Once you've hit that target and collected your bonus, you can move on to the next part. Now as you can see here, I'm running low, I'm almost out of shield, um, and we've got like some sort of attack of like all sorts of stuff coming towards you. This is where the, the controls of the game really come into the own. Very responsive, very slick, no lag, and that is exactly what's needed for this game. Love that bit of background there as well. I love how it's like scrolling across from uh, from right to left as the screen scrolling up. Um, yeah, graphically, this is a beautiful game. Another nice touch from the developers is uh, when you get damaged after you've lost your shield, you'll start losing parts of your ship that you have picked up. So at the moment, you can see there, I've lost my left wing, which also affects my firepower. Coming towards the end of my life now. Um, yeah, really struggling. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of incoming enemy fire. I'm trying to destroy fast-moving enemies. You've got enemies coming from behind you that are shooting at you, so you can't hide at the bottom of the screen. This has got a definite challenge to it. And I'm really, really enjoying it so far.
Well, what can I say about that game? Um, yeah, that was definitely worth coming back for. I mean, where do we start? Yeah, graphics. The graphics are absolutely fantastic. Really well drawn. Um, the spaceship, I love how you can um, like pick up bits for the spaceship and it adds on like extra wings, which gives you extra like shields, gives you extra firepower. Um, there's lots of weapon upgrades. Um, the sound effects, the lasers, the bombs. Um, you can all control as well how loud these all are um, in the options. Um, but also, not that you, you get much of a chance to realise it, but there's also a cracking tune in the background while you're playing that game. Um, the controls are amazingly responsive. Um, like, you know, you're able to duck and dive and dodge out the way of like incoming, uh, incoming fire. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really enjoyable. But I, I do especially like the, the bit where you can add bits onto your ship. Um, it, it, it just kind of reminds me of like Xenon 2, you know, something like that. It was That was one of my favourite parts of that game. Um, and then also when you're on down the right hand side, you've got like um, like what looks like a radar, but that's actually a shield. Um, and like after shields have gone, then obviously you've got their energy bar underneath. But um, really like the shield element, um, like how it's got different parts of the shield and how you see it kind of um, like disappear to nothing when, when you've took a, a few hits. Um, the enemies, yeah, very varied. Very varied, yeah, very varied. Um, there's lots of different lots of different types of enemies. They're all very well drawn. Um, most of them have like some sort of animation uh, going on to like going on with them as well. Um, the the enemies fire uh, kind of like glows like flashes, you know, because like sometimes with monochrome, like how uh, you know they're, they're only using so many colors, so it's good how that kind of it catches your eye, so it helps you try and dodge. Uh, the incoming fire and um, the backgrounds like the bases that you're shooting um like on the um like you know like on the on the ground so to speak um v yeah very pretty varied lots of different um things to explore and blow up and you've got to uh, obviously make the um like get all upgrades as well from from things that you blow up um end of level bosses as you saw um yeah that the that fire button's taking an absolute hammering. Um, but there's also, like, you can see the targets come up on the last, uh, on the end of level boss, so that you know once one part's complete, you can kind of uh, concentrate your fire on another part, and then hopefully finish it off. But, um, yeah, all together, I would say that this um, is an absolute must-buy. Um, graphics great, playability great, difficulty level is spot-on. The music's great. The sound effects are great. Um, guys, why have you not got this game already for your Spectrum? Um, as I say, uh, it's available from Bitmap Soft. And at the minute, it's only 7 quid. So get on there and get it bought while there's still some left. Because, uh, yeah, genuinely an awesome game. Guys, that's it for today's episode. I really hope you've enjoyed it. It's been great for me to get back into the swing of things and get back to one of my true loves, which of course is homebrew. Um, and the ZX Spectrum for me has some of the best homebrew on the 8 bit micros. If you do enjoy 8 bit micros, 16 um, bit, where you know we're talking about the Omega, anything like that, then please consider subscribing to my channel uh, because this is definitely my passion. And until next time, guys, goodbye. Thank you.